Now, as I'm looking at my image, I see that there's a perfect space right here that I can place the individual picture that I took. So the tool that I want to work with here is going to be the quick selection tool. That's the fourth tool from the top. I can use this quick selection tool and I can begin to drag around different areas. And you can see that the computer does a pretty good job of selecting mostly of what I want. Now, if there are some parts that I don't like, then I can remove those later on. I can see right now looking at the bottom here towards where the shoe is located, I can see there are a few parts that the computer automatically selected that I didn't quite want. Now one of the areas right here is down there by the shoe. If I look at the top, similar to what we were using the zoom tool for, I can hold the alt button and I can swap back and forth between the positive or the negative, the plus or the minus sign. Now in this case, I want to subtract from this portion, so I'm going to use the negative one to remove that portion. This side here is a little different. I want to add that portion of the shoe. So the plus is selected and I'll use it to add that portion to the shoe. And what will happen in most cases, Adobe will do a pretty good job of selecting and sometimes you just may have to do a double check just to make sure there's nothing missing. So that's the way of being able to do so and selecting it. One other way also to with selections, let's say you don't like your selection, you can press Command D or you can go to Select, Deselect. And by doing that, you can deselect your image because there's one way I want to show you just as well that how this can possibly work. Now, again, I have this layer here. I can also click Select Subject. Now, this is something that's a newer feature inside of Adobe Photoshop. I click Select Subject and it's going to look at the image and using the intelligence inside of the software, it'll do its job to try to figure out what it is that you want to have selected. And that's why it's good to have a clean background, a really good contrast between what it is you want to select and what you want to stay there. And by doing that, you can see that it's done a pretty good job of selecting the areas that I want. Perhaps there may be a little modification here and there, and that's what we can always use these tools to adjust and bring the parts back that we don't necessarily want to keep. And after I've selected the portion that I wanted to use, then from there, one way is basically by doing a simple edit. I can copy, I go to my new image and I edit paste. And by doing that, it basically places my image directly inside of there, which is fine. But there is sometimes a case perhaps we look at our image and it looks fine to us at the moment, it's still a good idea to still maintain all that additional photo information if you need it again in the future. Now my image is still selected and when I click right here, this option allows me to create a mask. And when I click on it, a new thumbnail will appear. And this new thumbnail appears to show me now Photoshop has recognized by the black outline here that this is the part that it shows as invisible. That's why the checkerboard is here and it preserves this information. So if I needed to, I can add that information later on. And that's why I like to use masks instead of working with a regular copy and paste. So from there, I'm gonna take the image and I'm gonna drag it up. As I drag it up, it's gonna show up on my screen. I drag it back down here and you'll see that now with the image, I have this ability to resize it, resize it so I can kind of fit it where I want to. And of course, with regard to the image, you know, there is much more fine tuning that you can do with the image and make it perfect and such. And that's where, again, this is where the mask comes in and a lot of different layers that you can use to adjust the image and make it stronger and such. I'm going to click the tick box here to make sure that I've finalized my selection. And then from there, I'm going to go to filter. And inside of my filter, I can go and I can click on whether it be a blur or I can add noise and those different things. So my preference and way that I like to do this is I like to go to my layer. I like to right click on it or control click. And when I do that, then I'm going to convert to a smart object. When I convert to a smart object, it consolidates everything into one layer. And I haven't lost this information. It's just basically nested. It is placed into a smaller compartment. And then from there, after I've done that, now I can go to my filter and I can add noise. And when I click on it, what will happen Let's say that I do amount something crazy that I know that I don't even want to use. I click OK, and now it's saved that information in here. So I can go double click on it again, and I can modify it to something more of my liking. So my adjustments that I make are not permanent. I have some ability to make modifications later on. Now, this amount here of 4.8, that works for me for right now. If I want to change it later, I could do so. But I'm going to click OK for that, and that works for me. And at the same time, there's a little bit of blur there. Same process. Go to my filter. 
go to blur and then I'm going to click on Gaussian blur that's one of my favorite blurs now when you add your filter when you add that filter specifically Gaussian blur make sure preview is selected so that whatever changes you make here is going to show up on this screen similar to before you can zoom in or zoom out you'll see the number that corresponds here and as I zoom in I can look at it closer up if I wanted to to kind of get a better idea of it but also at the same time I can see the full screen view over here as well okay and looking at that Gaussian blur I can begin to make adjustments to get it more towards what I think would be reasonable perhaps about one on this document it gives me a little bit better range and it kind of fits a little bit better with what I'm working with now at the same time you can see that there's obviously the idea of the contrast between theirs and mine isn't as doesn't have the same amount of contrast so if you go to image and you go to adjustments brightness and contrast I can go click over here and I can adjust the contrast a little bit so that it's going to have more compared to what it is that I may see inside of this image here and it's very high contrast that I have on this on this document I may adjust a little bit more as far as brightness and then from there adjusting the contrast to kind of get it so that it can blend in a little bit more and I can click the preview option to see the before and the after but I want to have this look a little bit more towards what they what they had on their on their document okay. and again all of these things that I've made the adjustments on the brightness and contrast Gaussian blur add noise I can change this over and over and over again so that I can modify it to what I feel works best and also to note that if I wanted to go back into the smart object again I can double click and what it'll do is it'll open up my original document and the object is you'll see this layer one I have my original information that's saved inside and this PSB just represents the layer that I have here that is inside of the smart object from there you would go on to the process of saving it so in this case what I need to do is I need to go to file and I will save then I'm going to save this as as historic and then from there I want to make sure it saves as a Photoshop. I want to make sure my layers are preserved. I want to make sure that stays there. And then I'm going to click Save. Now this is going to save it as a Photoshop document. This is just a warning to make sure that the compatibility is going to be compatible with older versions. I'll click OK. And I save historic.psd. Now for the purposes of the actual project itself, then what I also would need to do is I want to save it as a JPEG so I can upload it. In order to upload as part of your project, you need to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save a second copy and it's going to be format here down at the bottom we had Photoshop but when you click the drop down there's more options that appear we're going to save it as a JPEG same name is fine for this case I'm going to click Save and now I have the option of adjusting the size of it and the thing is anytime you save it you save it in high or better you'll be in pretty good shape so that's the quality there of eight of high I'm going to select OK and that information has been saved so what we've done is we've taken an image we brought it into Adobe Photoshop and we've modified a modern day image adding it to a historic image making the adjustments to that and from there you know making a production of the content that is a really good introduction into the software and there's so many things that you can do once you know how to use the selection tool to select and remove and add objects but also at the same time working with the different layers and making modifications so that you can blend content and work with it together hi everyone thanks for watching Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.